if that's um, something you'd be comfortable doing. Oh, absolutely. Should like I start that. with Sean? Um, or do or I go to first? I, I wouldn't go directly to HR. I would, um, since your appointment comes from the select board, you're an appointee of the select board, you might, you might try starting with the town manager's office, just sending an email. Okay. And maybe okay. maybe there's an easy way for the town manager's office to follow up and get you some information. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Great. Thank you. I hope there's not. <laughs> I hope there's not a conflict of interest, but I'm glad that you brought it. Up. Um, so as we were just mentioning and trying to get clarification on, I didn't send out an agenda before this meeting like I have in the past with the sort of bullet points. Um, and we can kind of clarify, I, I would like to clarify for ourselves whether or not that's something that it makes sense for me to continue to do since generally all the topics we've been talking about have covered been covered under the COVID-19 discussion, which is how the meeting is posted. Um, I think, you know, maybe it made sense then but now we're also talking about the sort of return to the new normal which is separate from the covid discussion so gene has updated tonight's meeting with a couple of other um bullet points um and so i wanted to get clarification moving forward if i can continue to send out the bullet pointed additional info that falls under the headings of those postings or i'm just trying to think about how to communicate um, yeah with board members the, the sort of details um, and the, and one of the things that we've been doing before is to send an email that's just information only you know a link no additional you know no opinion or anything like that um, so given that the agendas have just been a topic and a link um, Maybe it does make sense for me to continue doing that, or maybe it doesn't. I guess I'm asking here to clarify because everyone was like, we didn't get an agenda. Right. If it's a, so from a matter of preference, I can't function without an agenda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's important to have a focusing document that everyone can kind of see the same points. And it's, it, it's important to actually be able to prepare um, in terms of whether you can or not. Um, I, I don't know who, who I, I heard you asking, there was another question of whether you could, and I, I, I don't, I guess I don't know who that question goes to. Right, so is that open meeting or does that relate to posting of the meeting agenda? I don't know where we get that guidance. So the simplest way to do this um, is kind of how, how we used to do it before this. And with, with COVID, once that came on, we always just wanted to share information as fast as we could because we were meeting at, at rapid paces, but um, the ideal way to do it is to set up the meeting, uh, set up the agenda um, along with the posting, right? So 48 hours in advance. And so if we have to post 48 hours in advance, we should have the agenda 48 hours in advance set as well. Uh, the chair would, would work with um, uh, Laura or, or a health agent um, to set the agenda and the topics of discussion and ideally, you'd get everything to Laura, any information that you, that's related to the agenda items that are on there, so she can prepare packets <laughs> and then disperse out to everybody. So then we get an email with the agenda and attachments that are that are specific for the agenda items. And you know, to Kerry's point, it's really helpful to get it in that one kind of place because then you can, you know, prepare for these meetings. A lot of times, our meetings might go faster, <laughs> yep. as, as a nice byproduct of that. Right. Yeah. Just to. Uh, Useful. Just to second that, um, you know, my my experience on the only other board or regulatory board that I've been on um, is the Board of Registration and Pharmacy, uh, which I'm which I'm on. And what they do is, um, I think the the board chair meets or reviews or contacts with the executive director in advance what the agenda should be, and they. Um, you know, they publish the agenda 48 hours uh, beforehand. They actually pu publish it um, on their website um, and, and, and that's it. And as a board member, um, not only do I get the agenda 
at least 48 hours in advance. But as Kevin mentioned, if there's any um, additional materials or readings or anything, it's it all comes to me in one email. Um, actually, it comes to me, in, the, the state has a, a funny way of doing it. You have to uh, go on their interchange to access it. They won't do it through email, but I think we could send it through email. And then you have your agenda from a public point of view, that same agenda that we would get by email 48 hours before would be posted um, on our website. And and that seems to work pretty well when you come to the meetings and you know, you know what's on the agenda and you've done your reading and ready to go. Yeah. Great. And so I can have all the links and all that stuff. It doesn't have to be just sort of like the four bullet points. I can have all the links and the subheadings and all that. That's fine. Yeah, th just the best channel is to send it all to Laura, and mm -hmm. then that, that that circumvents open meeting law because then Laura's just pushing all back all yeah. to us. Great. I agree. Great. Um, so I see that we have a few other people on the call tonight, and so I just wanted to open it up for any comments before we start. Questions? Actually, nope. can I ask a quick question to Kevin? Yeah. Well, to everybody, but I think Kevin. Um, if the agenda is already set, can we do that separate, or does it have to go out at exactly the same time? No, if the meeting's already posted, can it go out at a separate time? Um, yeah, it's just it, ideally to get it to us 48 hours prior to the meeting is helpful for the board members. Um, to okay, no, that's fine. Just the meeting. Yeah, but it yeah. doesn't have to be like boom, boom. You know, and it, it, you know, if we post a week before, let's say, it doesn't have to obviously go up then. I would just say okay. as a good rule of thumb, try to be um, try to be at least 24 hours, but 48 would be preferable. Okay. To the meeting. Wait, with the at least, wait, sorry. I would say get the, the, um, the agenda. Okay. Ideally 48 hours, um, or as soon as you have it set, is the most ideal. Sometimes that's before 48 hours, but 48 hours is probably a good time frame to get it to the board members because then they can look over the material, they can look over the agenda item topics. So when they come to the meeting, they're ready to discuss if they have thoughts, ideas, and it, it helps just the meeting flows a little bit better, but I'd say at least 24 hours but, um, to get us the agenda before the meeting. So that, I guess my question then is, I thought that the everything had to be posted 48 hours in advance. For the open meeting law, it does. It does. The yes. meeting has to be posted. So, and so the, any agenda that I would send out, if I sent out 24 hours in advance, that would not be in enough time to... I'm, I'm saying when you get it to the board members. The meeting has to be posted. The agenda right. has to be the posted meeting um, 48 right. hours beforehand. Right. So and so all of that's our... why oh. Ideally, you'd, give, you'd probably get it to us before it, it's even posted. But we're posted like through the end of August, for example. So that it's, so all the meetings are posted, and I just wanted to be clear. If I were to add, it seems that I need to add those bullet pointed agendas to those public postings with all the links and everything, and that should be done 48 hours in advance. As am I? I didn't. I, I didn't realize we were. I thought we were just set up for all. I mean, I didn't realize we were posted. Yeah. Somebody yeah. clarify that. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're yeah. All That's what. That's why I was asking if it was okay for one Okay. Uh -huh. Now I see. Okay. I didn't realize like we were actually posted. Chair, I'll show everybody what the updated uh, agenda looks like, if that's helpful. Yeah, that'd, that'd be helpful. Yep. So this, this agenda was posted uh, two or three weeks ago, and here it is updated because of this distinction between the items that are COVID-related and those that aren't. So, Enforcement, master plan, and the minutes are the three things that are on tonight, in addition to COVID. I see. Okay. So then we um, we really should. My thought, um, I don't know if, you, if you'd have to, but my thought would be take, take all those postings down and just start posting 48 hours prior to do with the actual agenda. Because that gives the public as well. Um, the time if they see an item that's on there. So this is kind of tough. If the public see, someone from the public sees this, they, you know, that's not everything we're going to necessarily talk about tonight, correct? Is this tonight's post? I didn't even look at the date. This is no, yeah, this is tonight. Yeah, so this is what okay. we're going to talk about. Um, so 
Yeah, you I know, think the, ideally, from a from a public standpoint, they'd want to see the specific agenda items on there. I, you know what I mean? I would I would agree. I think you know the posting. There, there's a calendar on the website, and you know it tells people that when the meetings are and and how to access them, which is great. And that's that's on a, a PDF, the one that Jean just showed us. And then you could simply, when you have the agenda, um, you know, the detailed agenda completed, that can go to Laura. It, it could simply be posted as a second posting that, on that meeting link so that people who um, want to see the detailed agenda can, can see it. Yeah. Um, you know, it could be, right now we're doing the meeting the notification meeting. and trying to add the agenda on the same document. Maybe it would be easier just we have the meeting, you know, notification, and then 48 hours before you add a, a PDF attachment on on the website that shows what the agenda is. No, we, we can't do it that way. It's a it's a template that has to be completed. What template? The agenda has to be a, it. The, the town clerk will not post what you're talking about with an attachment. It has to be in that format that I just showed you. Uh. So that's where it gets tricky. And then where the board has been meeting so much, um, right. the items that are on there in addition to COVID were the ones that Eleanor had mailed out Sunday night that we didn't get to on Monday. So maybe if, if that's the easiest way to do it, to come up with a list for the week on a Sunday and then we'll um, stick with COVID on the Monday, and then we'll put everything else on the Thursday. That might work. Okay. COVID then, Monday. That's easy to post. Okay. That's easy to manage. With the, the one piece that maybe we forgot was to make sure that the board was aware that the agenda for tonight was going to be these extra items. Yep. Although, yeah, I mean, we did talk about them. As we you did. mentioned, we talked yep. about them within. And we said we were going to talk about them tonight, I think. Yeah. Remember correctly. Um, okay. So to recap, we have the new plan is basically COVID Mondays, <laughs> where that is the COVID nineteen discussion and those Monday meetings just the, the agendas that are posted currently stand, and then the other things are for Thursdays and the specific bullet pointed agenda would be posted forty eight hours in advance on the website, and I can include any links or anything. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Yep. Great. Got it. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so given that we have uh, Amy here and a couple of other folks, you know, I don't, I don't know if people are calling in to just listen or I'm wondering whether it would make sense to flip flop. Oh, actually, uh, this is the first Thursday of the month. And so we had talked about doing the health agent reports on the first Thursdays of the month. Um, so we could start with that, if that works. Is that okay? Is it on That's the agenda? Okay. Is it on the agenda? No. Jean, is it okay? I mean, I guess it's debatable whether it falls under the COVID-19 discussion. I'm going to defer to Kevin or Jean because I think they are the gurus on this. So is it okay? <laughs> uh, I think it's tricky. I would say, I would say, I would, I would err on the side of caution and say no. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, okay. Next, to wait until next, week next and Thursday? Then ne next, and then next in September, we'll do it on the first Thursday. We'll start then. Okay. Okay. So Thursday health agent report will be, does anybody know the date? Next Thursday huh, is the 13th. The 13th. 13th. Okay. Okay, so I am thinking that I'm gonna switch the master plan and the enforcement um, since that we, we have Amy here and that it might make sense to go ahead and talk about master plan. And then we, I haven't heard back yet from town council about enforcement. We had a question about whether or not any fees related specifically to COVID might be in any way different from other fees. Um, but so I think it makes sense to go ahead and jump into master plan if that sounds fine. 
Yep. Us. Great. Uh, so Jean sent out some items for information about a community needs assessment and a community health improvement plan. Um, so I think that will be great for us to talk about. I think that kind of falls in line with, as we think about best practices and return to new normal, that falls in line with sort of the long-term strategy for where we wanna go. Um, and then I think in terms of a short-term strategy, um, I mean, during COVID-19, like the town and the board have totally jumped in to make sure that everything was getting addressed in a really timely way. And I think somewhat that's led to some overlapping roles for health department and the board. And I mean, first I wanna say that I think the town's response has been admirable. I mean, Jean has been on probably over 50 meetings at this point, <laughs> way over that. <laughs> Laura has like bent over backwards to do everything that we've asked and gone out of her way. Um, and board members have been on Zoom calls sometimes daily and reading guidance from DPH at, you know, late at night. And so, so I'm thinking um, that in terms of a master plan, it might make sense to add a couple of roles to the health department and as a way to kind of ease that burden uh, and return things to a more sustainable place, both for phase three, but where we're going to be for a while, but for Reading and the board just moving forward. Um, so, and I think that would really just put us in a stronger position, um, you know, during COVID, but after that as well. And so I'm thinking that adding a health director and an admin assistant. Um, you know something, can I interrupt for one second? Maybe this would be a good time to do my, um, even though it's out of order, uh, maybe it would be a good time to do my health agent report because I don't think there's a good clarity after um, conversations that I've had about these new positions on what exactly everybody does. I, I think, and I know it's not going to be like a decision that's made today, but I think like there's so many things that go into the health department that Jean and Daniel and Carrie, and, I mean, Christina and myself and John do on a daily basis that to us seem just so part of the job. But then when it comes down to it, I think it's, I think people don't understand everything we do. And I think it's important yeah. if you're going to have this conversation about all these new roles and like thousands of dollars in payroll, I think it'd be better if you had a better understanding of what we did. Because though I appreciate you said we do a lot and, you know, we're bending over and everything like that. I just, I, I don't think you guys, because some things aren't things that you guys need to get involved in, like, because they're just, you know, the things we do on a daily basis. But I just, I don't think there's enough understanding of everything. So I think going before you guys make a decision, you might want to, especially for the new members, know everything that we all do yeah i think that sounds great yeah i think um, that'd be yeah. helpful that would be i agree that that would be helpful i'd like to see that as part of the needs assessment i'd like not just staff to kind of report out but i think that that is part of a needs assessment is what are your existing strengths and capacities and then what are recommendations for further but i don't know if there are other things that are driving the um interest in adding positions at this point that I'm not aware of. Well, oh, sorry. I, I think um, I would agree with Carrie that usually the um, sort of process is you do the needs assessment and you decide what new programs functions we need to do as a result of that assessment. And then you look at the existing staffing and you determine whether there's a deficit in certain areas that we need additional people. So in the absence of kind of knowing what we're going to be doing differently, um, you know, if we're not going to be doing anything differently and we're not going to be doing a needs assessment, then we ought to look at what's happening today and if, if there, there are some needs. But I think if it's if we're going to be doing a master plan or a three-year plan, it seems like you'd have to do that first and then you'd have the justification for the additional staff if necessary. Yeah. Because I think Laura is looking at what, what's happening today, but the needs assessment might determine we need to do 
A, B, and C in some other areas, and we don't have the staffing that is there. Yeah, I totally agree that we want to do the long-term plan, the needs assessment and the health improvement plan. Um, yeah. And I think what I'm saying is I think there's something urgent as well, which is that we've been, you know, I, I don't think this is a sustainable model that we have the two hour weekly meetings, for example, for the board. Um, and I really wanna be conscious of, you know, we're having a board reorganization on the 17th and I wanna make sure that things are in a great position. Yeah, and I, I, all, I would like to echo Rick's comments as well, because I'm not looking at it on a now, because right now everything is COVID, but after discussing this last night, I spent quite a bit of time today looking at what other health directors do. And there's no, it's everything I do. So I was just, there's not really like, and maybe you guys don't know that I enter payroll or maybe you don't know that I sign off on mileage or maybe you don't know that I reimburse the nurse for her classes from the nursing exam or you don't know that you know, the town manager asked us to order masks, or you don't know that, you know, we go out and we do septic abandonment. So maybe there's like these little tiny things that to me, like the fact that like we order supplies and we, you know, and we work all together. There's no I in any of this. It's we work as a team in health and not one of us can survive without the other because we all work together fabulously. But there's so many intricate things we do, ordering the flu shots, ordering the needles. Like, I just tell you, okay, it's all set for the flu vaccines because you need to know that we're all set for the flu vaccines. But did you know that we ordered our own flu shots and that we have put in the needle request and we ordered the alcohol pads and, you know, we research this stuff and get the best prices. And, you know, this, this is all the things that fall under a director's position. So adding a director's position to stuff that is getting done now. Yeah, I totally seems agree. Seems like a waste of money. Well, I totally agree that it would be really, you, sorry, I see Emmy raising her hand. Um, I'm about to stop Emmy. Um, but um, I hear you that I think it would be really useful for the board, you know, so many new members to hear and really understand the health agent, the health inspector role, the public health nurse role, I can provide some clarification in terms of what I'm thinking about. Um, I can provide, you know, I couldn't before the meeting because both the meeting law, but I can provide descriptions of what I see as health director versus health agent uh, and that functionality that I think could be really um, useful. But Emmy, I'll right. and let you. So, um, hi, <laughs> um, introduce myself to those of you who I have not met. Um, I'm Emmy Dove and I'm the former chair. Um, I'm so grateful for the new members. You guys stepped up and it's wonderful. We need you, it's, it's great. I know it's very difficult when there's a transition. Um, you know, you, you end up losing institutional knowledge and particularly with a three member board, I think you don't even know what institutional knowledge you're losing because you haven't been able to talk to anyone outside of the meetings. Um, so I wanna give you a little background. Um, uh, last fall, uh, I sort of decided to sort of try and push the board towards more of a goal oriented focus. Um, with the idea that it, we would sort of map out a framework of operation, right? So um, we looked back at this old strategic plan. Obviously, now you guys are talking about getting a new um, needs assessment, which is great. Um, that was something that we were discussing over the winter. Um, and, and that's when budget came up and it became clear that um, we needed to have an understanding of the budget process. Kevin knows about the budget process, but I think the rest of us didn't really know about the budget process and, um, and we hadn't been involved in the budget process, at least in the last, previous two years. Um, so the budget process starts now, essentially, right? <laughs> um, August and September, 
um, that's when the department heads start to figure out what the needs and wants are. And then in December, they um, uh, present a pro budget proposal to the select board. And then um, by February, that goes through FinCom and, and all of them. And, and by February, it, I think it's uh, finalized for town meetings approval in April. Um, I say all of that <laughs> because um, when we're thinking about goal setting, it made sense to do that prior to that budget process, right? You think about the things you want to accomplish and whether there are things that may carry expenses. Um, at the time that we were doing that, we were discussing that as a board, I met with the town manager. And at that time, I suggested that we look into a hiring a health director, either part-time or full-time. Um, there were a number of reasons for that, but largely I felt that the health department was understaffed. Um, I think there are two primary models of health departments. There's a, a health department that is um, regulatory, based in regulatory and compliance. And then you can have a health department that has that, and then also has community health, a community health component. And my preference was to move towards adding that community health piece, which was part of my argument for adding a health director. Um, you know, I think a month later, COVID <laughs> happened, <laughs> and uh, that really exacerbated that. I think, particularly in those first few months, a lot of that was really heavy in community health. It was heavy in us drafting ordinances and that would impact the community, and that was tough. It was really tough, um, and I think we had a gap there, and. Everybody jumped in to try and fill it. Um, we worked a lot of hours. Jean worked a lot of hours. Laura worked a lot of hours. Dan worked a lot of hours. You know, Christy, a lot of nurses, all the nurses. Um, and the board members were working a lot of hours. Um, and we were all trying to fill these gaps. Um, and I just think it would be nice for everyone if you didn't have to struggle to do that. I also think, um, you know, that caused a lot of the murkiness in the role definitions as everyone was trying to jump in to fill, you know, to rush in to help with the situation, things got really murky. Um, and I think there are times, there certainly have been times when the board has been active in ways that we probably shouldn't have been. Um, I think I think things weren't as smooth as they could have been. We did all did our best, but I think it would be nice, in my opinion, and I had shared this last winter, it would be nice to not struggle there. And it would be nice if everyone knew what their lane was. Um, I think it would just make everybody function better together and partner better together. So I know this is a lot to think about. Um, and no, that, that's very helpful though, that, that is. Um, and it sounds like there's a time urgency because of the budget process and that may not let us go through a needs assessment and a consultant and you right. know that that may take until you know we might the outcome of that will be by the time the outcome of that the budget may be set and then if there's a need for a health director we, we will have lost another cycle in the budget i i know what an administrator administrative assistant does um but i wasn't sure what a health director does you know in clinical practice um in large organizations, there's always a um, struggle between <clears throat> when you have um, clinical people, either nurses or doctors in administrative roles, um, that you try to always tease out what's strictly administrative 
and what is where the clinician can add value to the, the administrative role. Um, and so is it, is it, and I don't know whether, you know, Ellen or Emmy could ask, answer this question, is it that the health director is an administrative person who does payroll and expenses and helps coordinate stuff, whereas a health agent is a much more, uh, is more of a clinical kind of um, special knowledge-based person who does um, a, a different set of things. So that's a question. Yeah, I really appreciate that um, separation in the way you're thinking about it. And I'm gonna show you some, some lists. Um, but first I did wanna say to, based on the point that you were making in the beginning that there's, there's time urgency here related to sort of a short-term solution even though we still may wanna do this longer term health improvement um, plan, um, which is that Bob has asked, or the town manager, Bob, has asked for our input. So I have spoken with him um, and he said he's interested to learn more about the distinctions between the two roles. And he asked the board to consider, you know, weighing in and giving some guidance. So, and I should clarify that in Reading, you know, the Board of Health doesn't hire people, but we would be providing this guidance um, to the town manager at this sort of pivotal time um, moment when the budget is being prepared. So if I can share my screen, I have a, um, I have a health agent and health director. So I was just able to pull job descriptions from, one is from Amherst and one is from Lexington. Um, and again, you know, things might be different in Reading, and, and I'm not saying that this is exactly how things would be, um, but just I, I feel like it might help us all be on the same page for what I'm thinking when I say this, and I don't know if Emmy's thinking exactly the same thing. Um, so let me share, is that fine? Let me share my screen. Eleanor, uh, yeah. I know that uh, I know that I don't really want to speak out of turn, but I did just want to add some Please clarification. Speak. Just from uh, just from my own experience as having, I'm I'm only a year out from studying specifically for this position, and during that time, uh, while I was in other departments, I've had health directors explain the difference before, and it appears to be entirely conditional on the town itself. Some towns will label the health director position as a health agent or yeah. a health director or an environmental specialist, but largely that definition appears to be, I don't wanna say arbitrary, because I've seen health agent qualifications uh, for certain towns, let's say in the East, where the job description is identical to the health director position in a smaller town uh, far out in Western Mass. And so to my understanding, Laura fulfills all of the duties of a health director and contains uh, and has all of the necessary certification, licensure, and qualifications of a full health director. Uh, if we were to go into any other town and compare, so thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dan, for that input. And I please feel free to jump in at any point. We are interested in learning the most possible and making the most well informed decision. Um, and I've also heard um, diff talking to different health representatives. Um, that's in some towns, the health agent and then the health director, the role is the, is synonymous, like the two words mean the same thing. Um, there are other towns where those roles are different and the town might employ, for example, a health director and a health agent. So I, I wanted to share these two job descriptions that I happen to pull to give the board you, an idea of the differences that I was seeing. But yeah, Laura, feel free. Sorry, I have a question. In the towns that you looked at, the health director and the health agent, though, they didn't have inspectors. So like Saugus has a health director and health agents but has no inspectors, where North Reading has a health director slash a health agent, and Malden has a health director and just inspectors. So right. did you find one that has all three? Um, no, but I just did a quick search of some that were in the local area. So it seems like there's a lot of variability. So a model with a health director, a health agent, and a health inspector, a public health nurse, and a part-time health inspector seems... Oh, I can actually jump I in. don't know 
Benny? Oh, I actually have one. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the town Westford, which is directly abutting uh, my municipality, mm -hmm. has a health department with all three positions. The health director fulfills the same role as what Laura fills in Reading, doing payroll, keeping track of complaints, going out on very specific inspections when the other uh, agent is unavailable, um, basically doing a lot of the administrative work, communicating with the board, that sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. The health agent in that town fulfills the same role that I do, which is doing most of the inspections, on occasion doing grant writing, although that doesn't really happen in Reading as much. Um, we hope it can. That's part yeah. of this discussion. <laughs> it can. Um, but so, and they do other kind of admin work such as is filling out permits so basically what i do now and then they did have an inspector but it was a part-time position and it was very specialized mm -hmm. so in, in westford's case their inspector only inspected food establishments and he only worked two days out of the week so in in westford that position is very similar to the position that john fills uh in that they basically do the overflow um and uh, in the case of Westford, that was food because they have so much Title V. So the health agent predominantly did that, and the overflow was food. In Reading, it's different. Reading has a lot more food establishments and a lot fewer other kinds of inspections. So the other kinds of inspections are overflow. So, mm -hmm. so John takes care of those. Um, so so, yeah, sorry, Dan, I thought you were done. Are you, are you not finished? Oh, I am. I'm sorry. I just stuttered. Oh, sorry. I, I don't like interrupting people. Um, <laughs> um, I just I just want to um, add in a piece of it, what I think is very important information. So first, um, what Laura and Dan have said is um, indicative of exactly what I've been saying, I think, a few times on different meetings. When you've seen one health department, you've seen one health department. They <laughs> are, there are similarities, but municipalities tend to create health departments that reflect their needs and the composition that they have. Emmy is absolutely correct that there's the, there's the environment, the regulatory aspects and the community health aspect. But within that, you might have environmental health agents that write grants, you might have community health agents that write grants, you have health directors that go do inspections. Um, so it's really uh, difficult to look at um, individual communities and that's what makes it frustrating for a lot of people and and i was really glad that jean shared the document that she shared with us when she shared the information um what isn't included in this is specific workforce recommendations about the the roles of health departments that were compiled by members of this regionalization group, um, which is esteemed members of the public health workforce from all over the state that have worked on this for years. Some have spent their life's work. Um, so I, 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 I want to make sure that we don't box our, my only concern, I think it would be great to add staff. My interest would be not boxing ourselves in without knowing what the recommendations and requirements that will be forthcoming about what roles we'll have. Mm -hmm. um, it includes education requirements and years of experience. Um, there's discussion about whether a health director has to have environmental health experience or not. Um, there, there's a lot of detail out there that um, I wouldn't want us to get boxed into something that doesn't allow Reading to keep up with this important change to public health practice in the state. It's really mm -hmm. an attempt to rationalize public health practice um, and make it so that it's a little bit less. You go to one health department, you've seen one health department. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if anybody else had a chance to review this document. Um, it I, I think, would, may I? Yep. I think what my point more was, was we have a good staff that's getting everything done and do, was doing outreach and, and um, different educational things prior to the pandemic hitting. I would hate to see 
an actor lose a job because it's phased out because it's a director and an agent where everyone's working and doing everything so well. Sorry, I didn't hear, there was part of it that I didn't hear. You were just saying you would hate to see something phased out. I would hate to see inspectors phased out because you go with the model of a director and an agent. I certainly wasn't suggesting any phase. I mean, my suggestion is to add functionality, to add an administrative assistant, add what I'm considering as the health director. And I would like to, if it's helpful to people, sort of just show this list of what, how, how I'm thinking of that. Is that helpful yes. for me to share? Okay. Yeah, I, I was taking this as an add-on to where we are to, to help the department tomorrow. I wasn't. I wouldn't I know, but there was, reading into it that way. There was a lot of add-on, and I just don't see how you can sustain all that. It's it's ready. Well, I think, it's not Austin. I know, the, but the, the part of when we were, um, to Emmy's point, you know, we were doing a, a lot of drafting of regulations um, as board members, um, probably um, would have been better suited to a full-time um, person doing that, right? So um, at the time, I think everybody uh, was was doing everything they can to to kind of keep everything moving. But you know, if we had had if we had had another admin and, and uh, director during this time, boy, that would have been helpful to all of us, uh, yourself included. Um, I, I think that's that's where this discussion was going. I, I didn't take it as that as we're look, anyone's looking to get phased out. I think I, I can definitely I can definitely feel this on my end. I can definitely feel the the swell of a of a need to have some uh, additional staff would be great. Uh, my apologies, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt again. I think uh, Laura's really emphasizing the concern that while there are some things that we haven't yet done, I don't feel like it's as a result of us not having enough time to take those tasks on. Um, because at present, the department is running fully on time and I'm worried that adding anybody else on would create a bit of redundancy, at least prior to conducting a needs assessment. So just as an example, uh, you mentioned writing regulations. I know Laura is qualified to do that, and that was actually my specific training that I'd received prior to getting hired. So either one of us could theoretically fulfill that role while simultaneously keeping up with our existing duties. And so I'm, I'm just worried about creating that level of redundancy that might push one of us out of the position. I, sorry, I'm trying to email. I decided that it would make sense for me to email everyone the, the documents that I was looking at instead of trying to have people scroll through. Um, and I definitely, uh, I hear you and would not in any way be even talking about this if I thought that I was saying we should get rid of any sort of functionality that we have now any sort of the roles that you all are fulfilling and I you started this by saying you know everybody's done an admirable job I think that we could have that here going forward supporting and giving more strength to this department is gonna help everyone. It's gonna help the health department, it's gonna help the board, it's gonna help the town of Reading. That's how I see this, not removing anything. Oh, um, that's my apologies. I think that was a miscommunication on my part. Uh, I emphasize the need for the needs assessment prior to this, simply because while good in, if, uh, if, a new position were added on without already uh, conducting a needs assessment, even if it's intended to help out, it could down the line render another person's position redundant. Because at the moment with COVID pushing so hard, it's true that we're a little, uh, we're slightly shorthanded, but even then, as I mentioned, we're still keeping up and we're actually a bit ahead of the game in terms of doing inspections. Uh, but so the concern is when that dies down, that redundancy might cause harm, even if it's intended to do good presently. So I'm not suggesting that that's a bad idea. I just simply advocate that maybe that needs assessment needs to be conducted prior to making that decision. Thank you. Um, 
again, <laughs> and I do want to continue to emphasize that I'm interested in, in um, um, sorry, I was trying to send this email to all of you too, interested in thinking through both the short-term and the long-term consequences. And I think it makes a lot of sense to anticipate what the potential long-term consequence could be of responding. We wouldn't wanna respond in a knee-jerk way to COVID, as you're saying, pushing so hard right now. I completely understand. Um, I think one point that we've raised during the course of the meeting is that there's a sense of urgency here that for the past, you know, during the pandemic, Laura's continued to say, you know, this is not, it, it, she's been more than willing to be on the phone at 11 o'clock at night and on all of our meetings, but she has said, you know, this is not consistent with what I see other towns doing. You know, their boards are not meeting twice a week. Uh, in the beginning, we were meeting daily. Um, and, you know, I don't, anticipate that but so so my point here is just the sense of urgency of this is not sustainable moving forward phase three is going to last until we have a vaccine i think that we given the fact that bob has said you know what i'm interested in hearing about this adding support adding admin adding a health director can you talk to the board about this and see what their recommendation is it sounds like um being mindful of the fact that the budget is going to be set in September or October. Now he's like, now is the chance. So another thing that we've talked about and I think have emailed about is interns. And his stance has been, it's fine to have an intern, but in our town, we pay the interns. So you just need to tell us that in the beginning when I'm setting the budget. So if we want to also make some space in there for an intern, then we, it's just that the timing is critical. Um, so so, and, and I'm not saying that to say, you got to make a choice tonight. I mean, we've just been, I've just sprung this on you because it was under the heading of master plan and we sent out some resources in advance. Um, but I want to go ahead and raise this because Bob is saying, I would like feedback from the Board of Health on this. So I anticipate that this will continue to be a conversation. Um, I don't anticipate us voting on anything tonight. Um, but I'm glad that we've, I'm not stopping the conversation now. I'm just saying that I'm glad that we're having it. Um, but you know, given the constraints of open meeting law, this is how we are having it. <laughs> Can I, um, is this something that, and maybe not, but is this something that HR could assist in, in terms of, um, uh, in terms of sort of looking at our current um, staffing in terms of what the role, what the roles and responsibilities are, and sort of create a draft um, of what, you know, a proposed draft of what a health director, the health agent, the inspectors, and an, an assistant administrator, assistant uh, administrative assistant would do so that we could actually. Um, all be on the same page in terms of what the what's being proposed and what the um, the differences are, um, and you know, getting back to my experience in clinical practice, we always try to optimize. Uh, we have the saying, um, uh, "Working at the top of your license." You know, we want people to work at the top of their license. So, if someone who's highly qualified like Laura, for instance, you know, in, in terms of all her qualifications and certifications is doing things that she could do, but you know what? It would be better that someone else does it so that she can work at the top of her license. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that could be helpful. And I think if we had something, and this kind of, at least when I was in Atrius Health, you know, this is something that you know, HR would assist in, um, you know, interview the people in the department. What do you do? And then, and then kind of, as you just did, look at some benchmarks in other, in this case, other towns and say, this is what other people do and then come back to us. It seems like this is staff work that could help the board make um, a decision. Um, so I, that would be one, one approach. Yeah. yeah, I think that I think Jean, I guess, would be the 
I think it sounds useful and helpful if that's something that they have experience doing and could easily say, this is what we would see as an admin, this is what we would see as a health director and do that work of, of obtaining the benchmarks. I think that could be useful. So um, can I make this to clarify? Could I clarify something Please. with yeah. what, what Rich just said? So you're thinking in terms of like a scope of practice or, or or capabilities of that of each individual is that what you're thinking not as opposed to a job description right just a list of what the responsibilities of these different roles might look like not a not a job description um, you know just so that we're all on the same page as to how it it might look if you know there was a health director role, a health agent role, a, a supervisor, um, inspector role, and an admin role. What, how would that look just by listing out the responsibilities? And it might be, you know, um, <laughs> it might be, you know, Laura now takes, does, I don't know, does payroll, for instance, or uh, some administrative task that, you know, she's perfectly capable of doing. But you know, if an administrative person could do it, then she her time would be freed up, both for quality of life and sustainability in her role, but also to do maybe some of the other community health programs that we envision we'd like to to do. So it's mm -hmm. not that we're contracting anybody; we're actually expanding our capabilities and our resources. But we so have to, to kind of see end, it laid out. Yeah. So to that end, then. Um, it sounds like this is a very important position that we're thinking about. Um, and we don't want to be rushed into that by any sense. And uh, so that perhaps taking our time and doing the needs assessment would be the better thing to do. And in the interim to answer the urgency, perhaps hire the administrative person to help us over the hump in the interim. Yeah, that idea out. So, so mm -hmm. one one thing I think that um, Bob has done in the past, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We can put placeholders into um, into budgets, correct? In other words, we we think we we think we may at some point in the future add this position during the next fiscal year. We think it pays X. You put it in, and the worst thing that happens is that does that. We don't hire that position that money just gets returned to the general fund is that the way it works um so there's a couple of things the um all of the positions that are full-time year-round positions are located on what's called the um, pay and class chart so and all of this is on the website right. so the assistant town manager position sits on a chart and so every position, few exceptions that are quote unquote seasonal, but the regular full-time and even part-time positions in the town are on the seasonal chart. If you're an administrative assistant, you're on the chart. If you're a um, DPW director, you're on the chart. If you're a town right. engineer, you're on the chart. Those are the only positions that we can um, hire for. It has to be on that pay and class chart. So, okay. So okay, gotcha. this is where it so gets if you don't create the position. You can't, you can't put a placeholder. So, and that's voted on by the select board. So okay. in order to look at a new structure, um, that piece has to happen. And I, I don't even remember exactly when it happens, but it's meant to be, I believe, consistent with the fiscal year budget. And I don't know if they vote on it before the fiscal year, or I think they do it in the spring, but I, I could be wrong about that. Um, but that pay in class chart goes with the fiscal year. So like sometimes you'll see, um, they do. I think they did a couple of weeks ago at a select board meeting, they added a position to the pay in class chart. And they did that at the select board. It was some minor thing that, that they had to modify the chart. But so the position to create something, uh, and, and it may even be there, because at one point we did have a health director. And then we went to a health agent model. So it may still be on the chart. I'd have to double check that. Um, but it, it's not a matter of um, 
just deciding you're going to have something. There's a few more steps involved and in including making sure everything fits with the town's paying class chart. Okay. No, I would just, just theorize them to do the study because um, I, I think that's probably the smarter route. Um, the urgency, I don't see as much as you probably, Eleanor, or, or you, Emmy, uh, as the chair in the middle of this, um, but I certainly can see urgency um, to a certain degree. Um, I know at least from uh, from an admin standpoint um, in the immediate future. I'm just, mm -hmm. just trying to think out the process of how this all would look and all, how this all would work uh, from a timing standpoint. Okay, that's helpful. We do, do, do we need to... Do we need to research whether or not the health director position was or is still on that chart? I have a question about this position that was mailed, emailed around. Sure. The health agent in Lexington, what's the difference between that and a clerk? Because I see that they make copies. Um. I didn't look at this yet. And, yeah, they make copies, and all you need is a bachelor's degree and a driver's license. I can actually answer that when I applied to the position uh, a year and a half ago prior to me getting Reading, uh, when mm -hmm. I was out of college. Uh, the way it was described to me by Human Resources from Lexington, uh, it functions as a health inspector position. So okay, they, thanks. They just call it agent. Okay, that's useful. I have another the one. Cop the copies pop threw me off. I was like, what is this? <laughs> I have another one. I think it's from Northboro. Um, but I don't even know where you find these places. I don't even know where they are on the map. <laughs> Google. You can't find anything local? <laughs> well, Lexington is pretty close. Um, no, Lexington is close, but they make copies. <laughs> But I, I Googled health agent description and health agent and health director description and then looked at the, um, then did some sort of comps looking at like some of the ones that we talked about, Winchester, um, Wakefield, Melrose, tried to look at towns that had a similar population to Reading. Um, and, and so I think one thing that's been revealed during this conversation that's important is to have a clear idea of what types of responsibilities we are thinking of for each, because depending on the town, a health inspector and a health agent could be the same thing. They could be very different things. All this relates to pay scale as well. Um, That's not bad, 75 grand for health inspector. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Lexington has a much higher median uh, income from mm -hmm. what I understand. Um, I re I really like that I just opened the email because I was trying to figure out what's happening and and I, I I I moved to Amherst and I really like that dis that description. Um, it's pretty broad, but I I like the applying of the the three phases of public health, the assessment, policy development, and assurance. I think that um, the assessment. Oh, I, I don't know, it, but I think it seems like we're strong in assurance. Um, I think that what you all have been describing is a need for policy develop, development support. And it sounds like it may, sounds like there's some capacity or a need for um, assessment too. Um, but I, I like that, that general description. Um, Good, okay. Um, can I just ask, a, a, I just, I go back, I need a process Please. answer again. Um, so, so the, to, to have a position on the paying class chart, first you need to make a proposal to the town manager, the town manager needs to review it, then it needs to go through finance committee, da da da, -da make its way to the warrant, and then the town approves the increase, at, the, at which point a box could get put on the chart. Is that accurate? Pretty close. It's it's. Okay. I'm not exactly sure of when that chart gets finalized, but, um, but, the, but we we build our budgets off of the paying class chart. Yep. So if that position isn't there, yep. In the beginning, it has to somehow. I don't know. I don't know what what goes first, but but it can't. You can't 
finally get there until that chart is modified so that it's on there. I assume so, you put it in, you put it in, and then the chart catches up with you after. But I have to get the exact mechanics of that. Because I, I, I thank you. That's helpful. And I, I had kind of a similar thought to Kevin. I was thinking a placeholder, and I, I try, I'm pretty sure that on town meeting, I had I voted for voted for a placeholder position. So that's why I was trying to. Hmm. put it all into into flow of how we how we move these things thank you for the um the clarifications that's helpful does uh, sorry can i ask for another clarification does um it's possible that the health director role is on the chart right and so the kevin's idea of putting a placeholder in to our proposed master plan for the next one year if the health director position is on the paying class chart, then we could implement Kevin's placeholder suggestion. Is that true? Am I understanding that right? <laughs> Did I freeze? <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh no! no I <laughs> She's thinking long and hard about this one. <laughs> I really, I really would feel more comfortable having all the facts and figures before I, I okay. dive forward okay. in any way. And I just, okay. I and, just don't have them. Yeah. And, and here, and here's what I'd put out there as a, as a, um, as a, as a idea of having been through this a little bit before. I remember taking things off of that shot on a regular basis as well too, as Christian, as positions did, you know, no longer. Um, were needed. There's been a ton of reorganizing, as Jean can attest to, with the positions that we have and the personnel that we have to combine them, to make them more fluent, to be more uh, fitting to their, their job description, their title, their, you know, the director and departments and what they, what they deal with. Um, you know, Kevin Bowmill is a perfect example uh, of something like that. So, you know, as well as you would regularly add these, you'd add those in, you would also take away that position that no longer exists. So, Long way of saying it, I, I bet not um, that it's on that Could chart I? to begin with right now. Could be wrong. Can I ask a question since we're doing job descriptions and the positions? What does regular attendance at workplaces required mean? Do you have to show up for work? Uh, is that what? Sorry. That's, that's, that. that's like a job <laughs> that was, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> the last bullet is literally show up. <laughs> Maybe that was on there to differentiate people who just drive to location rather than coming to a simple building. That, that must have I love been, it. Must have been a uh, COVID description. <laughs> copy, copy, and show up. The so there's one other title that um, has been tossed around, which is assistant health director as well. I mean, while we're talking about titles. So, Eleanor, how would you suggest we move forward uh, on this? Because we've been talking now for an hour, and I'm not yep. sure where we're going. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, Before you move forward, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I just had a question for clarification because I'm, I'm starting to get a little confused. Uh, are we discussing the addition of a health director as in a higher role or an administrative assistant? Or not a lower role, but like a like a a more administrative role, because I'm I'm a little confused. You were talking about adding some uh, someone that could do some of the overflow admin work, like payroll, so that Laura could focus on outreach. Yeah. But we keep bringing up this health director position, and so I'm wondering, right. uh, just for clarification, what exactly are we talking about? So oh. my suggestion was two roles. Um, the initial thing I said was health director and admin assistant, adding those two roles. We've talked, you know, it, plenty has been revealed during this conversation, including the need to learn more. Um, another title that we might consider instead of health director could be, or, or we could consider health director and assistant health director. You know, there are different ways that towns think of health agent, for example. Um, but the two roles that I was proposing to talk about were health director and admin assistant. So both both of those. 
two separate roles. Does that clarify, Dan? Yes, and as a quick follow-up question, uh, bouncing off a little bit of what Richard said a little while ago about uh, individuals working at, what was the phrase? It was very clever. Top of your license. Uh, top of their license. Yeah, I like you. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just as a question, if a health director position were to open up, would it not possibly be appropriate to promote an existing member to that position? I mean, Laura is about as qualified as you could possibly be. Uh, the only certification she lacks is Title V, but we don't have private septic in town by town ordinance. Uh, you can't really build in new septic unless you meet some very exacting conditions. So that's not really a need the town has, but she has every license under the sun. So if we are going to put in a health director position, wouldn't it be kind of a better idea to move Laura up and then fill her now vacant position with maybe the new hire? I mean, I think that, oh, Rick, did you want to? I was just going to say that's sort of like five steps down the line. Right. I mean, you kind of have to know what the roles are and we have to decide. And then you, you have to think about, okay, what level is it? How, what's the reporting relationship? You know, and then if you're posting something, anybody can apply for anything. So I, I'm not sure we could really answer that question right now when we're still trying to sort out the roles. Right. And I, I do want to remind us that while, you know, the roles have kind of gotten blurred during COVID and I feel like the board has gotten um, more just we've just all worked together a whole lot more than we used to in the past. Um, the the town so in Reading the staff is managed by the town and the so we wouldn't actually be making any of those hiring decisions the way that things are currently set up. I mean some towns have the board you know the members of the board do the hiring in that town or sit on interviews. Um, and, and right now, I think what we're considering is not the logistics of how staff decisions would be made, but adding the functionality that we're trying to describe here, that community health functionality. And, and admin support as well. Can I just say um, one thing? I just want to say, you know, I think it's it's um, admirable and, and a little... Um, frankly, a little surprising um, to hear staff arguing that they're, they're, they're good. I'm not aware of other health departments that are, are, that if, you know, there was a discussion about adding staff, I, I think everybody I've talked to is like, boy, we could really use some more bodies. Um, we really need some more help. So I think it's really admirable that you all are, are, you know, kind of defending but I, but I also think you're working extraordinarily hard. And I think we're pretty clear that there's a need for certainly some admin support and, and sounds like some of the policy development support. I, I don't want anybody to think that this is a, um, I mean, this is a, you, you, there's a lot of work happening and there's even more still that needs to happen. How do we help people accomplish that? Um, that's how I see this. I just wanted to make that clear. Great. Yep. So to answer your question, Rick, where do we go from here? Um, so Bob asked me to provide feedback from the board. Um, I think that we've had a really good and thorough conversation tonight. I anticipate that we may want to have more because this was the first that anyone had heard about this. So maybe um, we could plan to put it on the agenda for next Thursday. Um, if that works for everybody, if we're going to do COVID Mondays, this is really part of that return to new normal. Um, so we could slot that in under Thursday, uh, under next Thursday, if that sounds. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would advocate for um, some staff work being done prior to another discussion, because otherwise we'll have the same discussion next week, you know, yeah. without, unless we're very clear about what the proposed, I mean, these were not job descriptions. These are just lists of responsibilities that the administrative assistant would do, the agent, the director, uh, you know, the yeah. inspectors, so that at least if we had that in advance and we could look at that 
as a proposal. It might take two weeks, you know, for, yeah. but I, I, I don't know how we could have another discussion unless there's some clarity around that. Well, what, that about if, what about if we were to distill down some of the ideas, Eleanor's got some job descriptions, she's got some ideas of the tasks that, and maybe not get hung up on the actual definitions of what the job is, but like what I know one of the things obviously is to get some help with minutes. Um, and so I've actually um, been looking into whether or not we might have that capacity already. And we may, I, I don't know. Um, I've reached out to uh, one, one possibility. Um, that can possibly be solved a lot quicker. Um, and any of the other administrative tasks, we should probably distill that down into a list of the kinds right. of things that we are looking at so that we're clear about this, this is, this is the rationale for why this, there's a need for additional staffing to do this, this, and this. Right mm -hmm. now, given the model, the, this, this doesn't exist. And um, it sounds like the, um, likewise with what Eleanor has found with, I haven't had a chance to look at them, but I assume this embedded in some of those uh, materials, there's some some high points that could be pulled out to say, these are the kinds of things that we're talking about for the other item that's before us, the health director. Um, and, and that begins now to map out. I, I believe embedded in the, um, the study that they, the governor's, um, I'm not gonna get the title correct, but the, uh, the one that the link that I sent around, I believe embedded in there is information about staffing models. It's a lot of material to digest but um, what what's a health director? What's a health agent? I haven't gone through it in any detail, but I believe that there's information in there as well. So um, I'm happy to work with Eleanor or you know work with whoever um, to pull some of that information together about these are the specific things that the board is saying needs more staffing to do these things, and maybe it's combination of admin and, and some other stuff. Yeah, I think too, To I appreciate that you've thought through, I mean, you've always thought through things before we even talk about them, um, but the, you know, the potential to use like an existing admin or share that, I, I do um, though wonder about one thing that I talked about with Laura was how critical would it be to have someone sort of trained in health so my understanding of things like complaints is that it might be something we're having an admin specific to the health department would be useful, you know, kind of rather than a than a, not a generic admin, but but having somebody who could have that additional capability and skill set might be um, useful there. So to your point about pulling out like generally what would the roles be mm -hmm. I think it would make sense to yeah that would be helpful Laura into that conversation too yeah and Does I have a or I have um task, I have job descriptions and I have task lists so people for their positions actually put together a task list a task and list. yes and um, so whatever information I can provide, I'm happy to. Great. And Laura and Dan, is that something that you all would be willing to think through what specific types of health related admin support would be useful? Well, yeah, certainly. Great, thank you. So, given that we don't know when this will be pulled together. Um, we could aim for next Thursday. We do, do we think that sounds reasonable or do we think, oh, I'm just thinking, sorry, again, about the, the 17th, our reorg. And again, I was just thinking it would be important to possibly have that before, although it's not a necessity. Next, a reminder that I won't be here next week. Right. Okay, great, thank you. So then it, it seems can like- Can I add one thing? That you guys might want to talk about too, since you're going to be reorganizing and adding new positions. This might be a good time to do the tree lawns. 
The what? What do you mean? What? Well, the whole tree lawn ordinance that you wanted to do with the pesticides. Oh, did we not finalize that? No, that's been on the deck for like five years. I thought that we finally finalized that last yeah. year. I think that's waiting a waiting time for the, I, the select board has to deal with it. I think right, but if you if you're going to bring in new positions, this is something that if we you guys have been working on it for some time, and it might be a good thing to put in the job descriptions at this time. Enforcement, you mean? Well, yeah, because okay, like I know we've been working on it the three years that I you guys have been working on it the three years that I've been here, and I believe you guys were working on it two years before I started. And if you're going to be adding jobs, it might be something you might want to incorporate at this time because there would definitely be a need for more positions if you added that. I just want to make sure I follow. So you're saying that if we checked people's tree lawns, then we would need inspectors to go out and check them or? Well, if you want to make an enforcement that says that they can't put the, the whole enforcement that you guys were discussing about the tree lawns for the last five years, the pesticides and everything, if you wanted to go forward with that, now might be the good time to do that where you're going to be adding additional staff. It's something you can take on. It has to be enforced. Sounds like something could be folded into the... Laurie, right, you're going to give a job list of tasks to Gene uh, or whoever's going to do this and you can just include it in that. Mm -hmm. We could look at that. Okay, so we're looking at August. I, I yep. really can't because you guys haven't decided on it yet or the select board hasn't, I'm not sure. Where did you say it stood, Emmy? She's unmuting herself. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, the last I knew, it was just, we had, hadn't we all voted, I, COVID, ugh. <laughs> um, last I knew, we had all voted on it, and it was, it had to then go to the select board. Um, yeah, my understanding is that issue was finished many months ago. That's my, uh -huh. that is my memory from watching meetings that there was discussion and then that it was voting and moved to next steps, but. Yeah, and then it just never, I think it just never quite, it, the select board had a full agenda for a while because of, I think, I suspect because of budget process and all of that mm -hmm. and then COVID. <laughs> but the, well, sure, that's, we can circle back about that and, and, um, yeah. wrap it in if we need to. Um, and so given that Paula won't be here on the 20th, I mean, sorry, on the 13th, then the next, the following Thursday, I think is the 20th. So it would make sense to put this. So what we would hope to have in advance of that meeting is the list of roles um, from Dan and Laura for an admin, and then from Dan and Laura and Jean and whoever <laughs> um, wants to um, in HR, as, as Rick was suggesting, to pull together the roles that we would be thinking of adding that relate to the community health, outreach, the policy development, that sort of thing. Does that sound like a plan? So we would all review that in advance of the August 20th meeting. I think Jean already, Gina, and maybe I'm wrong, but don't you already have the job descriptions and the tasks, correct? Yes, but the job description and it sounds like what the board is saying is there are some additional components like community health outreach policy that that yeah, those are already in there i'm not sure this sounds like something more extensive than what we already have that's why i'm understanding it that's the way i'm understanding it too It was on my job, my review for once COVID stopped. So I'm, I don't know. The 
this sounds like an internal discussion that maybe can be happen yeah. and we can move on on, on yes. the board for please. Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. So I'll put this on the agenda for the 20th. Okay. Um, so the two other things on our agenda tonight were the, or three others. So there was COVID-19 discussion. Um, there were minutes to go over and then there were questions about enforcement. So the COVID-19 discussion actually might be or the shortest. <laughs> so there are a couple of things that I forwarded you all earlier. Oh, sorry, Kevin. Oh, Emmy's like, but <laughs> Emmy, thank you. You don't want to get this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so let's see. So the COVID-19 discussion. So what I forwarded earlier were some fantastic materials. So as you all saw on the Monday command meeting two Mondays ago, Chief Burns convened a committee to work on the Board of Health's encouragement of mail-in voting. So they have been very hard at work. And what I forwarded to you earlier was the postcards that had been approved. You may have seen some different color drafts. We worked very hard to make sure that it was neutral with respect to any political affiliation with color. So we stayed away from red, we stayed away from blue, but we also stayed away from purple, we stayed away from green. Um, there were some different political campaigns that were going on that used those colors. So <laughs> we wound up with teal <laughs> at the very last minute. <laughs> Um, so let me know if you need me to share any of those materials. Again, I think I forwarded them. I think Jane Wellman got them um, to us before the meeting, so I forwarded those. Um, so you have there a timeline for the release of messaging to the town. So this would be things that might go through Facebook, Twitter, the message boards or the light boards that you see on the side of the road. Um, we There's also a press release uh, that I, you know, I, I drafted, but Jane also took a look at, Lara, Laura Jim took a look at, and then I was going to ask the board to take a look at that um, you know, in hopes that we could vote on it tonight. But again, this is something that you didn't see in advance. Um, and I don't like to, be, I'm the kind of person who likes to have a really long time to read through everything very, very carefully. <laughs> and I we understand if you feel like you haven't had enough time to read this. Um, but maybe given the fact that this is an, uh, it's, it's sort of timely, I think, to go ahead and release like now, given that the postcard's about to be coming out, maybe it's a sort of thing where if you all approve it and you, if you don't have time to approve, for example, the press release tonight and you would want to approve it um, over email, that could maybe go through Laura. And so we wouldn't be violating open meeting law, but you could have some more time if you don't feel comfortable voting on that tonight. And then the other thing, uh, Jean is reminding me, thank you, is that vote to use the revolving fund to pay for the health revolving fund to pay for the postcards. So okay. it's my understanding that there's a, a significant balance in there that would cover the cost of the postcards and the postage. And this is a fund that, um comes under the Board of Health. It's the fund that we use for the clinics. So it's my understanding, Laura, as the agent, as she's ordering supplies and preparing for clinics and buying vaccine and getting re reimbursed for vaccine, this is where the fund that it, all that flows into, which is why there's a substantial balance. And then town meeting votes to authorize a, an annual cap in spending of 25,000. And so, um, but it comes under the Board of Health and obviously Laura as the agent for the Board of Health is able to very easily go in and out of that fund with the reimbursements and the ordering and all of that. And then a few years ago, it was, um, it was the, the wording of the fund was broadened, you know, and other programs, sort of like in your job description, other duties as assigned. Um, so even though it's a, um, it's a revolving fund that was initially dedicated, and I think it's even called the Health Clinic Revolving Fund. That's the official name of the fund. Um, its its use and its its description is beyond health clinics. But I think it would be helpful to have a vote from the board, since this is a pretty good amount of money we're spending here for the printing and the postage. 
um, to, to have that on the record, I think would be helpful. Thank you. So great. So thanks for and giving do that. Do we back. have an estimate for that? I think it's 3,900 is the, was the recent one, although I think the cost is going to be a little bit higher because the, we were basing that on sending out 7,000 postcards and that was from Laura Jim's memory. And then she checked and it looks like it's a, it's a little over 9,000 postcards. Okay. Um, the library also offered to hand out postcards that didn't go to people in the database, but instead we decided to, that they will hang a banner in that, you know, that big window that the library has in the front um, that they would hang a banner there instead of handing out the individual postcards. Um, but so the most recent estimate I think was around 3,900, which includes um, it's for, it is for both rate mail, not first rate, but Jane checked on that. And she said, given that the okay. sorting facility is in North Reading, it didn't seem like it was gonna take any less time if they went with the bulk rate. And so given that it costs a little bit less, but, and we didn't, the anticipation I think is that it would arrive in people's homes as early as next Wednesday or Thursday. Mm -hmm. Alan, has command already approved this? Yeah, so in Great. terms of the, <laughs> yeah, so it is, um, I asked Chief Burns whether or not we needed to vote on it tonight. And he said that given the revolving fund, given that, it's sort of already been authorized. Laura could, we didn't talk about Laura specifically doing it, but we, the board didn't have to vote on it, but I think it totally makes sense. You know, we want everyone's input and I think it makes sense to have that official, the board approves the, the cost given that it's larger um, and something where it's a messaging campaign coming from the board. And, and just, so this is COVID related and command has authorized and there would be an expectation that there may be reimbursement for that as a COVID related spend, expense. Exactly. Thank you. And I mean, I should say, you know, I don't want this to just be a thing where I'm the only one in these meetings. That's how it has happened for the postcard because of open meeting law and he on Monday called the meeting and then we had the meeting on Wednesday, which is not enough time to post. But if, it, so he has convened this planning committee. I don't know whether or not we'll meet again in the future, but anybody who would like to be um, included in those meetings is absolutely welcome. Uh, any other board member, we can just post, post and then we can all attend. So just let me know. You're a, you're a very generous sharer, Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> I think your calendars are just looking too empty. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, so the question before us is whether we vote to approve? Do we want to vote to approve? Do we need to want to discuss further before we vote? I'm sorry, well, there are couple, sure well yeah, good, good point. What are we doing here? So one question is the approval to spend the money on the postcard. And the second is the approval of the press release because that, that comes from the Board of Health. Yep. So that didn't just come from the chair. Yep. If you prefer, if we could just do it from the chair, but my understanding was that everyone was in agreement that mail-in voting after the motion that we passed, given it's a, was a safe choice recommended by the board. So you're looking for a motion? Yep, two, I guess, two separate ones. Well, one about you, would, one about said something, you would said something about maybe um, doing the, the press release via email so that we had time to Process. I'm a processor, and that yep. would be my preference. <laughs> Fully understand. Um, um, but I'm happy to make a motion to go ahead and approve the monies for the postcard. Okay, great. Second. Great. That's the postcard mm -hmm. and the postage, to be clear. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, for postcard and postage. Come out of the health clinic revolving fund. 
to come out of the health clinic revolving fund. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay. Okay, Carrie, second roll call. Paula, yes. Carrie, yes. Eleanor, yes. Great. Um, and then procedurally for the press release, mm -hmm. if there are any questions or comments or edits that you all want to make, we can do that in an open meeting. We can't do that over email because okay. that would constitute oh. liberation outside of a public meeting. Okay. So we could talk about it on Monday. Right. Okay. And I think that, the only thing with that is that we would change, we would edit it a little bit. I'm not um, here. Possibly. I'm not here. What about having oh, Laura send it here. around? Could Laura send it around to get comments electronically from everybody? Are we yeah. talking Vlasic or Jim? Yes. Just so I know. Laura <laughs> Vlasic. No, <you>. Yes. Laura <laughs> okay. Vlasic. Would take now, I just wanted to make sure I just wanted to make sure I did mm -hmm. not write something down that I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> she, nope. she could take a draft press release, send it around to the board, and say, "Give me your comments." Yeah, and, and then I can give everybody's comments. I can add them in yellow. Which I actually, I don't need. Yeah. Okay, and then how would it go? Are you saying? then we would all review it on Monday? Or are you saying that might be a way that we wouldn't have to wait till Monday? Well, I'm saying rather than spend time at the meeting editing, I've been in that movie many times. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> we could fast forward to the yep. group edit version. Okay. okay. <laughs> yep. Okay, I think that sounds good. With the caveat that if you don't want to make any changes, you can just approve it. <laughs> thank, thank you for that um, suggestion because I was just thinking, yeah, we'll talk about it at command. But yes, thank you. Working on so it. So you guys yes. are going to work on this all weekend and send it to me all weekend, and I'm going to update it all weekend and send it back to you for Monday morning. Um, I just want to be clear because you guys are just discussing how you're demoting me. I want to make sure I'm doing this all weekend. I want to be clear again that we are we're not talking about any demotions, um, but I do understand the point of we would not also be advocating that weekend work needs to happen. And so one thing that we could do Good. is on. Um, well, actually, I mean, we could send all the documents once the meeting starts at 10 a.m. can be sent to me. I can just combine them all using track changes and then they're all in one document with track changes to clear for everyone to see. And then we don't violate any open meeting law. We're making a big assumption that there's going to be changes. I just right. want to point out. <laughs> That's true. I, I, I think we can I think we can make this a little simple and everybody have a chance to look at it if they want to take the time to look at it. If there are changes needed. Uh, they that you know they can email you to say we, you know we we do need to discuss some changes, not discuss them, not talk about them, just the fact that there would be some need or there wouldn't be some need. Great, I think that my makes guess, sense. Yeah, my guess is that if, if you know it's already mm -hmm. been drafted, command's already approved it, it's already been looked at from what well, my understanding is eight different ways um, um, with uh, with a bunch of eyes. You know, I think I think we'll we should go on the assumption that it doesn't need to be changed. Well, to to be thank you, but to be fair, it was Jane and Laura who looked at it, um, and then Chief Burns hasn't reviewed the the final press release. So, oh, so it isn't it isn't approved. He thought that the Board of Health was going to talk about it tonight. Okay, all right. That's why I'd asked that earlier if it was if it was approved by command or not. Already. So, okay. Yeah, sorry. The, 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 the postcard the, was. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, okay. if that's not clear. I'm glad we got that straight. Okay, so if that makes sense, then if everyone just wants to email like no changes or yes changes, we'll talk about Monday. Great. Okay. Great. Um, Okay, so the last things that we have on here are meeting minutes and enforcement. Enforcement, 
I feel like is not, so I haven't heard back from town council yet regarding whether or not there's any special COVID related consideration. Um, what I had, I can send to everyone and we could include it. Paula, I know that you're not gonna be here next Thursday, um, but it could be that this is just the beginning conversation. I have pulled some policies or regulations um, that I thought were maybe comparable sort of across the spectrum. And then I can include those in the packet for just maybe suggestions of where to start with enforcement if we go the route of fee. Um, but that's one possibility. I see it as a launching point for discussion, not any sort of final plans. So if that makes sense to everyone, I can basically put those links to the other regulations that board of the health department has into the agenda for next Thursday. And people will have time to read that. Okay. Sounds good. Enforcement to August 13th. Um, okay, so just, then- Just to be clear, I, I just wanna make sure I got that right. It's COVID enforcement we're gonna go over August 14th? Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, 13th. Thir 13th. 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 Yeah. Thank okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Don't come on the 14th. None of us will be here. <laughs> <laughs> just, out of, just out of clarification, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a bit out of the loop. Uh, are we discussing uh, enforcement in addition to what the state has outlined in its guidelines, or uh, is this something else? Right. Great point. So I think an important thing to include will be any instances where the governor has given specific so in the example of like the the august 1st travel ban the governor has given a specific there will be a 500 dollar fee um but in other cases where the orders have been written with the language of and it's up to the local or regional board of health to in, enforce this order um those are the cases the sort of gray areas that town council talked about before that i'm just think it would be useful to to consider. I think that, you know, at this point, it makes sense to think through if we have issues like REC has raised potential issues there. If we have issues where, um, you know, you're continuing to go into a business and getting complaints and their employees are not wearing masks, not saying that that's happened, but it's certainly a theoretical possibility. It would be useful to have thought that through in advance and say, you know, we've, we've got a policy for that. And it may make sense to use the same fee structure that we've used for other um, violations. It may not. I just think it's a good conversation for the board to have. So Dan, yeah, I think that's a really useful clarification. Uh, just as a, as a, not a, not a suggestion, but an offer, uh, would you like, uh, either Laura or myself to compile the governor's orders and see if we can find any of them that specify a pre-written set of instructions on how to enforce and how many of them are up to LBOH. Yeah. Because I do know that, because <laughs> I do know order number 31, the, the mask one does have clear instructions. Right, right but I, it's going to legal though. I would um, defer to legal, Gene. Oh, that's true. Gene, we've already gotten legal in it, right? I'm not involved in that. I think that's Eleanor and town council. Isn't that? Yeah, I mean, I had just emailed um, the two contacts that I had previously to say the board raised a question, which is, are there any extra considerations for enforcement of COVID related violations that are in any way, or is there anything different we should consider if we're thinking of um, enforcement? policies related to COVID, anything separate from the typical regulations and enforcements that local boards of health come up with. So I, I don't think that that's in conflict with a compiled list of the governor's orders and the cases where there is sort of gray area. Those would be the cases where the local board would need to make a choice. And then in the cases where it's black and white, I think that sounds awesome to have you all compile that. I don't know what other board members think. 
I guess I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm happy to have staff do some work to help us work through orders. That's great. I'm not, I'm not sure what the, the, what the, the, um, that it sounded like there's a suggestion that there are some orders that mm -hmm. say it's okay for boards of health to enforce and that there are others that are silent on that. And I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little puzzled by that. That's my face. So my understanding is from what I've read of the orders is that a lot of them have a paragraph in there that states the implementation, the enforcement of this order is in the hands of the local board of health. But it may be from what I'm hearing from Dan that specific ones, and, and I haven't seen a lot of the ones that have what he's suggesting is that specific ones with the exception of the travel ban have an enforcement fee structure built into the order and yeah. then others don't. Um, yeah. I mean, the only one that I know with a fee is the August 1st travel ban. Right. That's that's the only one that I'm aware of with a with a fee. Um, I'd be interested in knowing which ones are specifically reserved for the state to enforce. Um, the local board of health has concurrent powers with the state, broad powers to enforce as they see fit. So I'm I'm interested in knowing where there are areas that have been explicitly carved out as state responsibility. Um, more that I'm interested in knowing which ones the board is is um that's that's what I'm curious about. Oh yeah, I mean my understanding was that it's up to local boards to enforce all of yes. them. Yes. But not a plan a plan for enforcement has not been right. included in hardly any no. that I've seen. No. So if there well, are specific enforcement plans such as if you break the travel ban they'll fine you $500 if and there are those cases, I think it would be very helpful to have that guidance presented yes. to the board. Yes, maybe we were saying the same thing and I just didn't hear it that way, but that's what no, I was I yes. think <laughs> that was a good conversation that we had. Okay. I certainly <laughs> terrified all of us, Dan included. Okay. My apologies. I, I think I just misunderstood. I, I didn't know about the, I, I didn't think it was about the fee structure. I thought it was something else. Uh, well, Sorry. I, no, I think I might have set you folks out on a red herring. No, no apologies. I think it was helpful. Uh, it led to a clarification. Um, so we have meeting or sorry, anything else to discuss with that? No. Okay, uh, so we have meeting minutes of 6, 8, 6, 22 and 7, 6. I think these were ones where um, that I had had recommendations and Jean and Laura had worked to amend the drafts. Um, I haven't seen any amended drafts, so I don't know. If uh, I might not have sent out. Which one are you going to discuss first? I'll shoot it out really quick. Um, Just It's highlighted in yellow, so it'll be easy to figure out. Okay. I'm wondering whether it might, given instead of having people kind of read through it really quick, would you mind, Laura, sending out the 6-8, the 6-22, and the 7-6? And then what we can do is just move that to Thursday. What were the dates again? Yeah, I have six, yep, eight. I have seven six, seven sixteen, seven thirty, six fifteen, six twenty two. And I think that's all I have right now. Do you have six eight? They just gave me a new computer, so I gotta try and find it. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, six eight two. Okay, because I think six eight and six twenty two at least we had, or I had some amendments to, and it involved watching the video. And I think both of you were collaborating to update those drafts. And so, I guess I'm saying maybe if if you could send around, you're welcome to send around all of them just so that we have them. I'm gonna send them all. Okay, and one so the updated thing. drafts for the 622 and the 68, and then um, you can send the other three, the 76, 16, and 615 out as well. So it should be two, six in total, correct? Oh, I have three. I mean, I have five. Maybe there was one I missed. 68, six, eight, 615, 622, 76, 716, 730. Oh, 7.30 was the one that I missed. 
Sure, I think it makes sense to send out all of them. So the amended versions of those first two and then the original versions of the other four. Done. Great, and then I will put that on for 13. Um, so I think. Is that a motion to adjourn someone was about to say? <laughs> right here. Uh, wait, one more before a motion, motion to adjourn. I can't let you go that easily. <laughs> um, Thank you. Time's up. So, you know, we, ha we had talked about this before at a previous meeting, and I wanted to say it to everyone um, in person. Um, I'll start with the fact that I have loved being part of this board. I have been so honored to be a part of board <laughs> particularly during COVID-19. Um, but my professional role, as I've said in the fall, is um, not going to permit me to, to be a full member as the way that I, in the way that I would want to be a fully participating member. So I am planning to resign on August 17th, which is the day of the board reorg. I have let the town clerk know. And I wanted to let you all know. Hmm. Unfortunately, I, I knew this day was service. coming, Eleanor. <laughs> Thank you for your let service. You, uh, I'll, I'll definitely go on record, since I'm writing the record, I'll make sure that it gets in there. Um, <laughs> as saying you, you've done um, a remarkable job in chair uh, position uh, and the un, in the most unusual and unknown circumstances that, that we've ever faced. So. Um, great job. Um, sad, sad to hear that you know, life is taking you away from the board, um, but I'm sure you'll enjoy being off of it once you go out for a little bit. And who knows, when things go back to normal, there's, a, there's always going to be a need for positions. There may actually even be a need for five positions by the time that, <laughs> that comes around. So, um, you know, thank, thank you very much for your service. And uh, Wait a minute, we're going to be hiring for a health director. Can she apply for that? <laughs> Not qualified. <laughs> Come on, we, we, we're going to add, we'll show up. <laughs> Kevin, thank you. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Eleanor, I feel like a hard new, new, new you. <laughs> I know. Sorry. We made you really jump in, hit the ground running, <laughs> and I'm just leaving you high and dry. Huh? <laughs> Eleanor, we've done 11 meetings together. I feel like I've known you a lifetime. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very good thing. I've been very grateful for your leadership on this. Um, and I guess the only good thing about it will be that I will get to talk to you out in the real world. So <laughs> I'll look at it that way. Um, and thank you. Thank you for everything you did. You've done. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Second that. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so now, if anyone wants to make a motion to adjourn, I won't stop you. <laughs> I just needed to get that out. Motion to adjourn. Again. Good night. <laughs> roll, roll call. Oh, roll call. <laughs> Carrie, oh. yes. Oh, yes. Eleanor, yes. And good night. Good night. Good night. Bye.